IEEE Transactions on Haptics has a new podcast format that is designed to keep you informed about topics in haptics while you're on the go by providing a brief summary of the articles in each issue. This podcast gives an overview of the articles found in the 2012 October through December issue. This first article aims to use tactile feedback in the form of applied fingertip forces as a substitute for traditional force feedback. Its title is Cutaneous Force Feedback as a Sensory Subtraction Technique in Haptics by Pratikizzo et al. This paper presents and evaluates an approach for providing sensory substitution of force feedback through the use of tactile feedback. This tactile feedback is in the form of a normal force applied to the fingertip using a wearable fingertip tactile display. The goal of this research is to demonstrate the efficacy and stability benefits of the author's sensory substitution approach as compared to traditional force feedback. The authors evaluated their tactile feedback approach versus visual and force feedback conditions in a needle insertion task that was conducted both with and without time delays. Test participants wore two of the author's fingertip tactile displays while also grasping the handle of an Omega Force feedback device. The authors assessed participants' completion time, needle penetration, and overshoot. The authors show their approach to be an improvement over visual-only feedback and to be more tolerant of delays than force feedback. The main contribution of the paper is in the presentation of tactile feedback that mimics the skin sensation naturally experienced during grasping and manipulation. This approach has potential stability advantages that may make it suitable for safety-critical situations such as robotic surgery. This next article aims to improve haptic interactions in medical training. Its title is Design and Evaluation of a Novel Haptic Interface for Endoscopic Simulation by Samur et al. This paper presents the design, control, and characterization of a new haptic device that interfaces with a user via the control handle of an instrumented endoscope. This device is combined with software to form a realistic training simulator for endoscopic surgeons. The goal of this research is to develop a haptic interface for use in endoscopic training that addresses the shortcomings of current interfaces, such as large device size, low force output, or non-ideal force torque coupling. The developed haptic interface generates high forces using a combination of electrical motors and brakes. A model-based controller is implemented to compensate for device nonlinearities such as friction. Experimental characterization investigates both static and dynamic performance of the device. The main contribution of the paper is the development of a compact, high-performance haptic interface for endoscopic training. This next article aims to improve the skill level assessment of a laparoscopic trainee. Its title is Force Parameters for Skills Assessment and Laparoscopy by Hurman et al. This research uses force measurements from tissue interaction during laparoscopic training tasks to classify the skill level of a laparoscopic trainee. The authors mount artificial tissue on a force sensor that is placed within a so-called laparoscopic box trainer which is a low-cost alternative to expensive VR trainers. A box trainer is simply a box with access ports through which laparoscopic tools can be inserted. The goal of the study is to identify force parameters that reflect a trainee's performance in a laparoscopic training task and to try to classify trainee's skill level as novice or expert based on these parameters. The authors have 11 experts and 21 novices complete a two-handed needle driving and knot tying task on artificial tissue inside a laparoscopic box trainer. The authors analyzed participants' interaction forces and identified two key parameters to predict training skill level based on principal component analysis. The main contribution of the paper is a new method for classifying the skill level of trainees based on measured tissue interaction forces in a laparoscopic box trainer. This next article aims to better understand the relative roles of force and tactile feedback on the perceived sharpness of virtual objects. Its title is Haptic Edge Sharpness Perception with a Contact Location Display 
by Park et al. This research utilizes a form of tactile feedback called contact location feedback to portray the center of contact between a user's finger and a virtual object. The virtual contact is portrayed by moving a physical roller to the location of the rendered contact. The goal of this study is to understand the relative roles of force feedback and contact location feedback on the perceived edge sharpness of virtual objects. It also investigates the effect of roller radius on perceived sharpness. The authors conducted several user studies to assess edge sharpness perception thresholds under several feedback conditions, which included force feedback, contact location feedback, and combined force and contact location feedback conditions. The main contribution of this paper is to show that while contact location feedback can convey edge sharpness information, that force cues are dominant over contact location information when judging edge sharpness. And furthermore, the radius of the device's contact roller has no significant effect on the perceived edge sharpness when using contact location feedback. This next article aims to improve the skill training and evaluation of dental simulators. Its title is iDental, a haptic-based dental simulator and its preliminary user evaluation by Wang et al. This paper presents a haptic-based multisensory feedback dental simulator called iDental, along with a new method for evaluating surgical skill level. iDental is a surgical simulator that is intended for sensory motor training of surgical skills used by dentists. The goal of this study is to combine both quantitative and qualitative data to derive a statistical measure of performance for dental skills. To validate their approach, the authors evaluated the performance of two groups of participants to perform three periodontal procedures. The two groups were composed of dental faculty and dental graduate students. Their performance was evaluated based on quantitative data based on the performance on the simulator and qualitative data gathered through questionnaires. The authors report that their statistical approach can distinguish the performance difference between the expert faculty and that of the students. The main contribution of this paper is a haptics-based, multisensory feedback dental simulator that can be used by dental students to practice and be assessed on sensory motor skills associated with dental procedures. This next article aims to improve training for bone burring surgical procedures. Its title is Impulse-Based Rendering Methods for Haptic Simulation of Bone Burring by Wang et al. This paper presents a new haptic interaction model that simulates the forces between a bone burr under high-speed rotation and static bone. This haptic model is implemented on a prototype system that also mimics the vibration and visual changes of the bone during a burring procedure. This provides a means of training for bone burring procedures common to orthopedic, dental, and otological ear surgeries. The goal of the study is to produce a more realistic haptic rendering model for simulating bone burring procedures. The authors experimentally characterized their system and evaluated human subject performance with their system. In their experiment, participants were asked to perform four bone burring tasks. The experimental results demonstrate that the feedback forces generated with their models are consistent with measurements made during actual bone burring procedures and can portray the subtleties of perceptions in bone burring operations, which can distinguish novices from experienced surgeons. The main contribution of this paper is in the presentation of a new impulse-based rendering method combined with a 3D vibration model to create a realistic simulation of bone burring. This next article aims to improve laparoscopic surgical training through a better understanding of physiomotor processing. Its title is Learning Kinematic Constraints in Laparoscopic Surgery by Huang et al. This research examines how the kinematic constraints imposed in laparoscopic surgery influence surgical training. This study uses a virtual test environment that is typical of a laparoscopic box trainer, which has access ports through which laparoscopic tools are inserted. The access ports enforce kinematic constraints on the motion of laparoscopic tools. 
The goal of this study is to better understand how kinematic variables impact learning and surgical training. The authors trained and tested 42 participants under two different virtual conditions. During training, the virtual tool responded to the absolute position in space or the orientation of the participant's handheld sensor. Participants were required to move in different sequences of target distances that were near and far from the virtual access port. The authors find the human motor system specifically relies on absolute position information and skilled laparoscopic manipulation. They also find that the exaggerated motions required of the hand during shallow tool insertions can accelerate task learning. The main contribution of this research is in the new understanding about the nature of sensory motor learning involved in the use of surgical tools. This next article aims to promote synergies between engineering and the cognitive sciences in creating new experience-centered technologies. Its title is The Inactive Torch, a new tool for the science of perception by Froese et al. This paper presents a new device, the inactive torch, where inactive refers to gaining information through perception action interaction with the environment. And torch comes from the British word for flashlight, since a flashlight case was used to house the author's first prototype. The inactive torch is a minimalist, handheld sensory substitution device that continuously measures and relays measured signals as tactile sensations. The goal of this study is to better understand how people experience their environments through motor action, especially when their action is mediated by technology. While the author's device can be fit with many different sensors and configurations, their current study configures the device to measure the distance to objects at which the user is pointing the device and provides vibration feedback with a proportional intensity. To investigate user experience with the inactive torch, the authors have 22 participants navigate a maze while blindfolded. The participants were evaluated based on the speed of completion and collisions, and are surveyed about their experience in the task. The main contribution of the paper is to provide another empirical demonstration that technological interfaces can mediate how we experience the world. It also provides a new theoretical framework for thinking about how to design an experience-centered technology that goes beyond mere functional concerns. The last article of the issue aims to improve the mobility of young children with movement disabilities. Its title is, Training Toddlers Seated on Mobile Robots to Steer Using a Force Feedback Joystick, by Agrawal et al. This paper presents a novel method for training toddlers to steer a mobile robot in which they are seated. The presented algorithm and training method uses a force feedback joystick and an assist-as-needed control paradigm for driving training. In this assist-as-needed approach, if the child steers the joystick away from the desired path direction, the driver experiences a guiding force through the joystick handle to realign them with the desired path direction. The goal of this study is to assess the efficacy of the author's new assist-as-needed control paradigm to help toddlers drive mobile robots. In their experimental approach, the authors first implement a robot controller that enables autonomous robot line following and then uses this capability to set an ideal path for the assist-as-needed controller. A force field about this ideal path is used to provide force feedback to the toddler. The author's studies with young children show improved training results with the force feedback joystick and haptic guidance algorithm relative to a conventional joystick. The main contribution of this paper is a new assist-as-needed control paradigm, which uses a force feedback joystick to help small children to control a mobile robot. This concludes our podcast for this issue of the IEEE Transactions on Haptics. Hope you'll tune in again for our next issue.